mile in fog patches and showers early Friday, but improving to greater than six miles on Friday morning. Stars shining bright above. Welcome back to the channel. I'm impatiently waiting because in about five minutes time, a 2021 Triumph Street Scrambler Sandstorm Edition will be delivered. Just had the call from Triumph, running downstairs. I've just seen it getting pulled off. This has been a bike that if anyone asks me, what do you think may be your dream bike? This bike has been the bike that I've said, if there is a bike that could fit me and tick every single box, this may be it. Okay, been dropped off. First impressions, very good, but I'm really going to try this time not to get overexcited. So I always say, almost every bike I get, this is my dream bike. So I'm going to be calm with this. I'm gonna go and park it up, grab a coffee with Monica, and come back down, get kitted out, head off. And here it is, the brand new 2021 Triumph Street Scrambler. This is a special edition, Sandstorm edition. And I'll be completely honest, I didn't know how special this was, but there are only 775 of these being produced worldwide. So it's an extremely limited run. So without realizing it, without realizing it, I'm incredibly lucky to be able to test this bike out. The standard street scrambler comes in at 9,300 pounds, but this, the Standstorm, 9,900 pounds. So for the extra 600 pounds, you get that exclusivity, the exclusivity certificate, special paintwork, and this special raised front mudguard. So that's a plastic raised front mudguard, that bit underneath, and you also get a tail tidy on the back. Personal preference, I know, but I personally think the T100s and the Street Twin and Street Scramblers are the best looking of the Triumph range because in my personal opinion, I actually think they're slightly better proportioned than the T120. I know that's a bit controversial and some people won't agree with me, but I think these are the pick of the bunch. And there's one thing I'm really keen to notice or to discover on these because if someone says, what's the best handling bike you've ever ridden? I, for me, it's the street twin. It's just sublime. And when I rode the Trans Scrambler XC, the big 1200, I just felt you lost a bit of the connection with the road. So this may be the happy medium. 9,600 pounds, 64 horsepower. So I don't think it gains at all. In fact, it may even lose over the other model, but it is a Euro 5 bike. It's also, 23 kilos so I think it's a little bit heavier than the street twin but looks wise it's in my mind just about one of the best looking bikes you can buy inspired by the desert races the Baja rallies I mean there's nothing cooler I know you've got a Steve McQueen special edition of the 1200 scrambler but this could easily be a kind of special edition Steve McQueen it's got that just beautiful classic look the the high pipes the mud guard i'll flip the bike in a second because it's got a really nice side plate on this side as well oh i'm six foot one and it's it's really easy it's a much much lower seat height than the xc and definitely hugely lower than the xc this is a very very manageable bike i'll actually see Try and get it level with Monica if I can stay in the light. Okay, so let's see what this is like. Lean angle. Oh god, it just keeps going. No worries about lean angle at all. I just carried on and on and on. So I think this will be really fun handling wise. And I will take it maybe in a couple of days or so off-roading just to see what it's like with some gentle off-roading but first impressions hugely positive
first 20 minute ride done and it's exactly as I hoped it would be. Beautiful gear change, great engine, super comfortable, very chuckable and flickable as well and really easily manageable. Weaving through traffic, maneuvering around, it doesn't feel heavy at all and got a compliment from the barista on the bike. It's always a good sign. One thing that I do need to get used to, I was riding along and then felt my right leg heating up and that's because obviously of the high pipes. So it takes a bit of getting used to, I'm sure it'll be totally fine, but it's only the second bike I've ever ridden with high pipes and you do feel it, so I may have to just consciously reposition my right leg a bit. You know what I feel right now? Proud. Just letting it soak in and imagining or just imagining owning it or just knowing that I've got it for 13 days that is oh, that is a special bike I actually feel I'm not okay I'm not gonna get carried away but I really feel that bike is me I really feel it very strongly Monica said it Monica said it when she was first down there she said it suits me and I don't know why I get that feeling they all do they all do that's too kind of you, but I really get the feeling about this, that that bike is absolutely spot on me. I'm not going to say anything until a few videos later when I've really tested it out because I don't want, I don't want to get overexcited, but I, I really, really like it. Okay, let's do a proper walk around now that we've done the first ride. I'll get Monica just to come around this side to something that we, I didn't show initially. That's something that's special on the Sandstorm Edition, I think, which is a nice side panel. And here is, here's what I see. So, beautiful, simple dash. Ignition on. Just here, for my left hand, you've got the information button, which changes the trip and everything like that. You then here have mode, and that's, oh, here we go. That's off-road. That's rain mode. Ah, okay, that's different obviously to the street twin. Makes sense, of course. So you've got that off-road mode, which is different. But all the beautiful detailing, look at that. Triumph motorcycles, just very, very simple and elegantly designed. They actually have, I know this is the special edition. In fact, I'll flip Monica around and I'll come back this way. I know this is the special Sandstorm edition, but they do do, if you go onto the Triumph website, for the standard model at 9,300, they do this beautiful kind of bluey grey colour. I would personally spec it with that beautiful kind of blue gunmetal grey colour for the tank because it looks so brilliant and retro. These bikes, they come with 10,000 mile service intervals, so really small service intervals, and with a special adapter, it's A2 compliant. I mean, this has got to be the coolest A2 compliant bike on the market. I said this about the Street Twin with 64, 65 horsepower. The power and performance of these bikes is perfect for the real roads. Because once you get to about 80, 90 horsepower plus, of course, it's great to have the extra power. But the fun of riding for me is riding as close to the limit of the bike as possible. That's where it's the most exciting. When you've got about 64, 65 horsepower, it means that you can really push the bike to the limit and get the most out of that engine and that's where the fun lies. So for me personally, I know it's personal preference, but I like the 64-65 horsepower spot. I think it's the sweet spot for real roads. And the sound of a Euro 5 bike. You know what Triumph prove? That even with a Euro 5 bike, you can still have that characterful sound. So if there's a manufacturer, I remember I tested the BMW i9T, the oh, BMW i9T and the Indian Motorcycle Scout, the least characterful exhausts for stock bikes that I've ever heard. And I thought it was because of Euro 5, and I know it was because of Euro 5, but Triumph have proven that you can still have a characterful exhaust with Euro 5. That's a good sounding exhaust. I don't see any immediate need to change that actually. I do a lot of two up riding, riding with a passenger, usually Monica on the back. And it's one of the concerns, if I was going to sell my Bonneville, which is incredibly comfortable for two people, what's it like with this, with the high pipes and slightly higher pegs? 
Monica, would you like to demonstrate, actually? No. Perfect. <laughs> right. Cool. Leave it. Leave it to me. This is what... And bear with me, because I'm sitting on this as well. This is what <laughs> it's like. Okay. Here's the exhaust, and that... You know what? I've been riding for about five minutes since the coffee. That's already hot. This will be scorchingly hot. You've got this protector, which is already a little bit warm. Even this may get warm. Some scrambler owners, I tell you what, scrambler owners, let me know. Does this make a difference for your legs and the pillion legs? Because that's right now. My boots come up to here, so I don't know if this part of my leg would get warm. I don't know. It's just something to bear in mind. But. It's okay. It's definitely not as comfortable as my Bonneville for pillion comfort, but I think with a nice seat on the back. So that's what it looks like. It's okay. It's okay for pillion. But in general, looks wise, just having an, a morning to soak it in. L let me show you, actually. I'll tell you what. I'll, shall I take over the camera and walk around it one okay, by one? Go for it. Front to back. Let's start with the spoked wheels. They just look so cool i love them you've got the black frame with the what are they stainless steel spokes looks brilliant single side disc doesn't need more it doesn't need to it saves on servicing saves on maintenance you don't need it with this amount of power you don't need two discs so perfect then you've got this high front mudguard that's plastic hmm i think that may be plastic as well looks brilliant coming around here you've got uh, here we go headlamp guard very nicely styled single instrument which looks brilliant just so minimal i think that's absolutely perfect then you've got the mode buttons the information button high exhaust i really don't think i'd change it it sounds good it looks brilliant wouldn't change it at all and then you've got the engine guard this is aluminium heavy duty looks really good i think that's a special for the sandstorm edition you do have the foot, pe foot pegs here coming around you've got mini luggage rack with three kilo max which is great so I was just sitting on that tail tidy this is so brilliant just that desert racer vibe there with the side panel and that is a full walk around and of course I completely forgot the tank color I really like this tank color but actually my pick for the street scramblers would be that bluey gunmetal gray that comes as standard on the 9,300 pound bike here for the day Levi's <laughs> they're not Levi's RST Kevlar riding jeans these are new for 2021 how much do these look like Levi's? A brilliant pair of riding jeans. I think they're only about 130 pounds, which is superb value. They look brilliant. With the RST Roadster 2 boots, brand new, already scuffed them. Super heavy duty, great quality boots. They're probably the heaviest duty boots that I've tried on a bike. It's all RST today. RST Roadster 2 jacket thick heavy duty jacket perfect for when it's 26 degrees but it looks really cool great retro style jacket one thing about this first jacket I've ever tried with built-in shoulder and elbow padding you can't take it out so it's actually completely built into the jacket with the Crosby RST gloves again it's great value these gloves are 40 pounds the jackets 250 pounds it's all great value and I think even the boots. I think the boots were £130. Superb value from RST. And their new range, a lot of this. New for 2021, new for 2021. Don't know about the jacket, but it's all brilliant stuff. AGV X3000, spoken about it a million times, but it's a great helmet.
I thought it would be interesting to show you the bloodline. 2010 air-cooled My Bonneville compared to the brand new 2021 water-cooled. The similarities are still so evident. Everywhere you look, they're really similar. And actually, jumping on this, beautiful, comfortable, look at the bend in my leg, really nice. Panniers on both sides. That's something I've noticed being with Monica this morning with this. Significantly less practical because of the exhaust, bit hot on your leg, and you can't have panniers on both sides. So there are compromises for the scrambler styling, but here, it's not a ridiculously high seat, even though it's higher suspension. This is a very, very manageable bike and easy to ride. And I had someone asking me, look, I've got about five and a half K to play with. Do I go for a four-year-old street scrambler or a 12-year-old, what do you call them? A 12-year-old Triumph Scrambler, which is effectively this bike just with slightly higher suspension. And I said, if you've got the extra money, for me personally, in my mind, there's a noticeable difference in these newer water-cooled Bonnevilles and Scramblers. I think they're at least 15 to 20% better than the water-cooled ones. They're just more refined, nicer to ride, better handling and stuff. So if you look on paper, I think these are both about 65 horsepower. They haven't raised the horsepower in this, I think for about 15 years or something. And I, I think that's a brilliant thing. You can keep going and going and going with the power, getting more and more and more. But Triumph and a lot of other companies have realized you don't need that. You don't need to keep going on the constant quest and hunt for power. 65 horsepower for a bike like this is absolutely perfect. You don't need any more. They've got the refinement and everything nailed. They've improved it a lot since this model. A lot. I mean, it's subtle improvements everywhere, but all of those small improvements add up to a much more accomplished bike. But that's it. Day one with the bike. Thank you so much for watching. I am definitely, and I know exactly where I'm going, I'm taking this bike to the exact same off-roading spot that I took the Mutt Mastiff 250 because I really want to see how is this bike? Is it a kind of pseudo scrambler or can you genuinely take it off-road and have a bit of fun? I mean, it's got the dual sport tires, so let's see how it copes. And we'll try and get angry because this is a one of 775 bike. If I drop it, I better be a bit careful, but I can't wait. 13 days, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.